Hello there, my name is Vince from My Mate Vince, and in this video today, believe it or not, I'm going to attempt to fix a Kingston SSD. This actually belongs to a viewer and Patreon called Lee, and he sent over a few things in a box, but he would like to get the data off this. Now, obviously, if it was super important data, you wouldn't be sending it to someone like me or attempting to fix it yourself. Before I start this video, this is the first time I've ever attempted to fix a hard drive. So it's just take it purely for entertainment and a bit of fun. Now, if there's something wrong with the main chips, then I'm not gonna be able to fix it. But if it was something like a shorted capacitor, which is possible, then maybe I can fix this and then I can send it back to Lee and his wife will be able to get the data back off this. Now, it's not super important. Otherwise, I'm sure he'd be happy to spend hundreds and hundreds of pounds to send it to a proper firm to get the data back from it but he would like the data back, but it's not that that important. So that's where we are. Now, let me just show you what's happening. Basically, it's being recognized as a drive and also it's coming up with the amount of gigabytes on it, but yet it's no, there's no partitions or anything in there. So if I plug it into here, I haven't plugged it into this one. I'm just doing it in here just purely for uh, the video, but I plugged it into my PC. Right, so it makes the right noise, but if I go into here, start, right click, disk management. Right, so it's asking it to be initialized. Obviously, I'm not gonna do that. And if you have a look down here, it is coming up, let me zoom in. It's coming up as unknown, but it's just saying that uh, it's unallocated, not initialized, so there is a problem there. So let's see if we can fix it. Now, when you look up online, there's all companies trying to sell you their package to get data from it. I mean, maybe it's possible it can work if there was some sort of corruption or something, but if there's a shorted capacitor in, it doesn't matter what you're gonna do with the software side of things, it's not gonna work, is it? As far as I know, anyway. So uh, let's take it apart, see if we can find anything wrong with it, as far as whether there's a component that's shorted, and uh, let's, take it, let's take it from there. So we've got little Torx bits up here, and it looks like they are Torx 6. Now this is a Kingston drive and there's a warranty little sticker here. Now I believe I don't have to worry too much about it being in a clean environment because it's not a mechanical hard drive. There's just gonna be a circuit board in here. Now the objective of this would be just to get the data back, not to have it as a working drive. But saying that, if there was a 40 capacitor in there, maybe it would continue to work just fine. It's amazing how much empty space there is. Look at that, that there. And we'll have a quick visual inspection to begin with, see if we can find anything that's blown. Now annoyingly, they are, that's definitely BGA. That must be BGA as well. But we can see, it's a bit confusing there because it looks like the edges are legs, but I don't think they are. For, oh, do you know what? It must be designed for two types of chips. Would it be designed for a bigger chip as well? So those balls are just already on the board. That must be it. But yeah, they're BGA chips, so we're not gonna be fixing it if it's a problem with the chips. So let's have a quick look around the place at the caps. Right now, I'm just looking for some burnt components or things that don't look very nice. Unfortunately, it all looks good that side. and it all looks good that side. Maybe if there was a shorted capacitor, it wouldn't even be recognized by the PC. So maybe it is a problem with the actual, uh, one of these main Kingston chips, which is a shame. Apparently it was being used and it just froze. That's the, uh, that's the background. Let me just check this zero ohm resistor. Yeah, that's working. Right, let's zoom out. And I suppose we just need to check for shorts. Annoyingly, there's, uh, I can't see anything that's, uh, that's actually wrong with it. See, not all the caps will be going to ground. You see, they're in line there. So even uh, even if it was 40, they wouldn't short against the ground. So they all look like they're in line. 
not those ones. So on these ones I'm just measuring with my meters on both of them. Right now that capacitor is testing short. Hmm. But yet it's next to the zero ohm resistor. That's weird. Right now, is that in series with the zero ohm resistor? Hmm. Right, I'm slightly confused because one of those legs are not going to ground. I would have thought that that would have been going to here, but it's not. So at this moment in time, that's the only short I can see on this side of the board, but it's not shorted to ground, it's shorted across itself, which seems to me weird for a capacitor, but it is next to a zero ohm resistor, which of course is shorted across itself. So I flip the board over and I check all the caps on that side of the board, and I can't find any other short on this board. It all looks perfect. There's definitely no shorted capacitors on here. So I want to remove the capacitor that is measuring a short just so I can measure it out of circuit and just to see then if the pads are short. For all I know they might be connected straight to this zero ohm resistor which would explain the short across it. It's the only bit of info I've got to go on at the moment so that's why I'm taking it off the board. I'm using low melt solder with a soldering iron because I don't want to use hot air on this board because Lee's wife's data is on these chips and I don't want to risk ruining them. So by using the soldering iron, I'm going to heat, keep the heat very localised to that tiny little capacitor. Right, I bet you this hasn't got a short on it. No, no short there. No, so it must be the pads. Yeah, okay. I'm gonna take off this zero ohm resistor just to, it just doesn't really make sense to me why the, uh, the cap is shorted. Right, let's see if the pads themselves are shorted. No, they're not. So is this linked to here? So that's linked to there. And that's linked to there. So that's the reason the cap was shorted. So it was designed that way. That's quite confusing for me. Right, so that's not faulty. Ah, uh, this is not going to be fixable. So I put the zero ohm resistor and also the capacitor back on because they're not actually faulty. And then what I decided to do is I decided to connect it back up to my computer and I'm going to use the FLIR cam to see if anything is getting warm because right now I have nothing to go on. That's a real shame because the top two ranking videos on YouTube, they both had capacitor faults. Right, okay, so obviously it's still coming up as disk unknown. Let's get the FLIR cam on this and see if we can see anything. Right, let's see if anything is getting warm on this little fella. Oh, look at that. Is it this chip here? Doesn't feel warm though, but uh, yeah, this uh, Filson chip. Okay, so that's definitely got heat on it there on the Filson chip, because if you have a look, can you see that's the little hot spot on that one there. Right, okay, that's useful to know. I wonder how warm it actually is though, or is that just normal? That might be just normal operation. Because it's not burning hot at all, it's in the 30 degrees, 36. Hmm, okay. Right, let's flip it over. See if we can see anything on this side. Right, and if you look where it's getting warm, it is the back of the Filson chip again, isn't it? So it's uh, that chip there. See, that might be completely normal, that heat there. Do you know what, to be fair to it, it does look a little bit burnt in the middle, doesn't it? If you have a look at this chip, you see it's intact. Where was I doing the flux? I was in the flux up here. Ignore that, that's just a bit of paint now that's come off that zero ohm resistor. Uh, if you look at that one, you can see you can read it completely. 
in the middle of that one. I would say it is that chip that's failed. So annoying that has to be a BGA. And that, does that denote the amount of balls there? So we've got 12, about 13 rows and A to N. So 196 balls, possibly. And even if it was just the amount that you see here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 by 7, it's still 49 balls. More doable though. No, it's not. Look, there's 196 balls. See, that's why it's not an, uh, it's not an option. It's just so hard to do that amount. Look at them all. I think the chip's failed. First of all, let me look up what this chip is. Okay, so I've looked up that chip there, and it's a Fison. I thought it was Filson. It's Fison. It's known as the Fison F11. I think that's how you pronounce it. It's basically an SSD controller, and if you go down here on this uh, Tweak Town website, it says PS3111S11, and it tells you basically what it does. If you then go into Google and type in uh, Fison FS11 problems, it will come up with stuff like this. Beware of any SSD using a Fison S11 controller because of failures. But then again, I'm sure many of these things with other chips do fail as well. Basically, it's not simple. They've got firmware and everything involved in them. There is websites on YouTube showing that if you change the firmware on it, that you can get it working again, but you lose all your data. Well, I've gone across all the resistors here. They're showing something, you know, they're not open. I've gone across the inductors, they're showing something. I've gone across the coils with the power supplies, they're showing something. And I've gone across a little diode here, that's reading one way, not the other way. And earlier on, as far as I know, I went across all the capacitors and there's no shorts there apart from the one up here, which isn't actually shorted. It's shorted because it's matched to the uh, zero ohm resistor. Also, we have various different power supplies on this, which are working. So if I get my lead here now, where's it gone? Here, let me just plug this in. I'm just going to show you a couple of voltages just to show you that there is definitely different voltages in here. So I don't think it's a problem with one of the smaller chips that maybe supply, you know, that might be like voltage regulators. So watch this now. If we were to go across this zero ohm resistor, I think this was 3.3 .3 volts. Yeah, 3.3. .3. Down on this one here, we have various different voltages. So we have a 1.1 volt, we have a 4.8 volt, and I think also up here we have 3.3, .3. yeah, 3.3. .3. So you can see there, that's already three different voltages. Again, when I go across the, the big coils here, which look like they're part of a power supply, you know, to like reduce the voltage down, like a buck converter, uh, again, we're, we're having something on these chips. 3.3 .3 here, you get the idea, there's various different voltages, 4.8, different voltages around the place, so I don't think it's a problem with that. I think the Fison chip has failed because it's got a, it looks like there's a burn mark on it, and uh, but it might not necessarily be a failure that software can't get the data back from. Now, I was considering just ending the video there, but you know what? I wanna see whether it is possible to get these files using software, so I'm gonna plug it into my PC. I'm going to try a software program and see whether or not that can get the files off it. So I've plugged it into my computer. I've downloaded something called Disk Drill. Haven't got a clue about it whatsoever. It was the first thing that came up on Google. That doesn't mean it's a good or bad. It's just the first thing that came up. So I've downloaded it and you see here it has recognized the drives that I've got. So the one that I'm going to want is this S11 one. And it also says here USB because I've got it plugged in via USB. So I'm going to click on this fella. And then I'm going to go to search for lost data and I'm going to let it do its scan and let's see what it comes up with. Will it find anything on here or not? Okay, what happens is it will only, there you go, it's gone again. So uh, it will only go so far before it says the device is offline and then I have to unplug it and plug it in again. Now it'd be different if you only had to do this for a while, but it's only... I think it was, is it 3% of the way through? So it's gonna ask me now to confirm that I wanna restart, yes. And now if you have a look, I think I'm 3% of the way through, no, 4%. And I've already had to unplug it about seven times. And you can see that I've got all of this to go through. And I'm only eight digits through at the moment, and that's nine digits. So I'm one out of a possible 46. So it's going to, well, I'm 1.6 out of a 46.8. So uh, it's going to take forever. Not forever, 
but it really will take I'd say more than four hours because I have to keep unplugging and plugging in again. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to go through this, but it's definitely counting up the blocks here. Well, okay, this is not working. It's just saying disk image cannot be created. I don't think the software route is going to work, but I'm going to try one more lot of software. All right, this is the next lot of software I'm going to try. Ease US or Ease Us, I'm not too sure. External hard drive recovery software. And the same thing is coming up on this drive disconnected. Okay, on this one, I managed to get it to 1.4%, but again, it just keeps hanging up. And then after you've unplugged it and plugged it in maybe three times, it will then grow by another 0.3 or 4%. So again, it will take hours, if not days, to get all the way through it. And I don't think it's gonna be successful after it anyway. So I'm gonna try one more lot of software and that's Recover It by Wondershare. So now I'm on Wondershare Recover It and it's coming up with the same thing. So if you have a look down here, it's reading the sectors. And again, it's stopped. Now you might think, well, it's gone through loads, but this is only seven digits, this is nine. So you see that eight there, that's the same as the eight there. So that you've got to get through 468 and I'm on eight and it's already been going for 12 minutes and I've disconnected and sorry, I've connected it up after it's been disconnected about 10 times. So realistically, I'm going to have to unplug it and plug it in 468 times before it will go all the way through. And right now I am going to be what, 2% off the way through, roughly, and it's 12 minutes. So I don't know, I mean, how many, well, that's gonna be 2%, so that's six minutes. So it's, it's gonna be 600 minutes, is that right? And to be honest with you, I'm not prepared to uh, sit here for 10 hours, plugging in and unplugging for probably at the very end. I just don't know whether it's gonna come up with anything. But you know what, maybe Lee would be willing to do it. So uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna call it a day here because I know in a minute now it will disconnect and then what I have to do is plug it back in again and rescan. And then the first couple of goes, it won't do anything and then it will disconnect again. And then when I plug it in, then it will start going up like crazy for about 10 or 15 seconds and then it will disconnect again and you've got to keep doing it like that. So uh, yeah, not really an option. So out of the three programs that I tried, they all seem to be doing the same thing and they're all struggling because of uh, the obviously the hard drive has failed. So maybe these services would work really well if your hard drive was still working but maybe playing up a bit. Or maybe if you deleted a file and you wanted to get it back and it hadn't been overwritten then maybe these services would work well. But I think in this instance I think really this uh, disk needs to go off to a professional or maybe Lee can sit here for hours and try to get the files out of it that he's looking for. Well, I'm not going to lie, it would have been lovely if I could have got it working and it also would have made a great video and it would have been nice to help Lee out because he's sent quite a lot into the channel over the years. Maybe if he sits there for 10 hours, unplugging and plugging in, unplugging and plugging in, maybe it will come up with some of the files and he can preview them. And then I presume after that you will have to pay. But if you can preview them, then hopefully that means it is going to work. I'm pretty certain the Fison chip is at fault here, but I would love to be proved wrong. Please put it down in the comments what you think. I'm sure a professional would be able to get the data from this, but I think using those online services, I think you'd be struggling because maybe that Fison chip is not communicating with the other chips. It would be soul destroying for me to sit through 10 hours of unplugging, plugging in, unplugging, plugging in to find that it would just fail after that. So uh, yeah, there we have it. Not everything is fixable, but I do like showing the failures because the failures can often motivate people to uh, not be so upset when what they're trying to fix also fails, especially if there's this their first, second or third time doing something. So uh, yeah, that is it for this video. Massive thanks to Lee for giving me the opportunity for trusting me enough to at least try to get the data back. I do feel I haven't caused any damage, so this will be getting sent back to Lee and then he can choose to do with it as he pleases. I hope you still got some enjoyment from the video, uh, maybe seeing the inside of this and seeing the process of trying to get the data back. And it just goes to show that not everything is always a shorted capacitor. Sometimes it can be more involved than that. So if you enjoyed it, give it a big thumbs up and I will see you all very soon. Thank you so much for watching.